everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and we're kicking off our love-themed read-alouds in preparation for this upcoming Valentine's Day by starting off with this beautiful bilingual Peruvian version of The Princess and the Pea, titled La Princesa and the Pea. This book I mentioned is bilingual, which means that it has both English and Spanish words in this story, and P in Spanish is El Guisante. Can you say that with me? El Guisante. So that's how you say P in Spanish. El Guisante. So hear out and listen for that word and you'll know what it means. There's also going to be other Spanish words and we'll learn them together and if you already know Spanish then that's great because then you can follow along and you'll be able to hear both English and Spanish words. And if you don't know Spanish, don't worry. We'll go over the words, we'll learn them together, and then you'll have even more words in your own vocabulary. Are you familiar with the tale, The Princess and the Pea? Yeah? You can look at the cover for a clue to help you remind you what it's about. Or, if you haven't read this story before, then go ahead and take a look and see what do you think it's about. Princess and the Pea, huh? Yeah, well, we're going to read and find out. But if you had heard of this fairy tale before, this is a different version of it, and it puts a fun twist on the classic fairy tale that you might know of. And if you haven't read it before, then you are in for a treat. So, this book also has beautiful, colorful, very bright and vibrant illustrations that really show the Peruvian style of culture and style of artwork, and it's really gorgeous to look at. And it's also really helpful to look at the illustrations and the pictures, especially when we get to some vocabulary or Spanish words. Looking at the pictures can help you understand what's going on and help you kind of figure out what the words mean. And Peru is a country that is in South America. So, are you ready to begin this sweet little tale of love? All right, let's get started. So the title of our book is La Princesa and the Pea. And do you remember how do we say P in Spanish? El guisante and la princesa. Sort of sounds like the word princess, right? And it does because that's what it means. That's how you say princess in Spanish. La princesa. All right, so la princesa and the P. So we already kind of took a look at the cover, but let's take another look and tell me what do you see that's going on here? Hmm. What's the princess? What is she sitting on? Yeah, it looks like she's on a bed, right? But look how tall this bed is. What are all these different things on the bed? Mattresses? My friends, but why are there so many, I wonder? When I sleep on a bed, I only have one mattress. How many do you have? Just one also? Usually. But she looks like she has way more than one, huh? I wonder what's going on. What do you think? Hmm. I wonder where the P comes in. Well, let's see. Let's get started. So this book is written by Susan Middleton Elia, and it's illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. So that means Juana Martinez Neal drew all of these beautiful pictures you'll see with the Peruvian art style. And Susan Middleton Elia wrote all of the words in our new La Princesa and the Pea tale. Okay. Let's get started. So here's our title page, which means it has the title, La Princesa and the Pea. And it has who wrote it, who illustrated it. Some kind of cool pictures going on on the side here. What animals are these, my friends? They look like guinea pigs. Hmm. They're kind of like bigger than hamsters. There was once a prince who wanted a wife. But not any niña would do in his life. So not any niña. Niña means girl in Spanish. So he really wants a wife, someone to marry so they can have a family, right? But not any girl will do, not any niña. Well, let's take a look at the prince here. What do you think about him? Yeah, he's kind of taller, kind of skinnier and slender. And what are all these beautiful things behind him? Yeah, maybe they're like carpets or cloths, and they all have really colorful and pretty patterns on them, huh? And I see some animals on this page also. Do you? More guinea pigs. 
a rooster, it looks like. All right, Lola, let's see what kind of niña this prince wants. His madre was picky. His mom was picky. I think this must be his mom. She hoped for perfection. The prince was so lonely, in need of affection. Huh, affection. My friends, what do you think affection means? If the prince was so lonely that he really needed affection, yeah, so affection's like love and caring and just someone's company and care. Yeah, so it sounds like he's lonely and really wants someone to love. But his madre, his mom, is very picky. Huh. And what do you think? If he is the prince, what does that make his mom? The queen. Ooh, so this is the queen. And what do you think about her? How does she look? She looks kind of bigger and rounder, and she's kind of strict, right? Does she look too happy here? No, I'm not too happy. And it looks like these are all niñas, all these girls, ready to come see the prince. And what is mom saying to them? No. Right? She's like, don't come near. Huh. But here came a maiden, a girl, en route to her castle on the way to the castle. I hope I can stay here if it's not a hassle. If it's not too much trouble, she says. She winked at the prince, who fell for her fast. <gasps> I think that means he likes her. No matter what mom does, I'll marry this lass, he says. So he's saying no matter what mom thinks, he wants to marry this niña. Huh. And my friends, what does mom think about that? Yeah, her face is kind of like, mm, I don't think so. And my friends, I see some different animals on this page. It looks like the girl, she's riding on a donkey. Kind of like a horse, but different. And what are these animals over here carrying all this wool on their back? Do you know these animals? They have really long necks. Not a giraffe, but a llama. Hmm. So llama is this animal. It has this longer kind of neck. It's more hairy. There are a lot of llamas in Peru. So the prince said, come in, but his mother, La Reina, his mother, the queen, La Reina, decided to test her. I wonder how the queen is going to test her. What do you think? I wonder if it has something to do with the P. Would this girl be buena? Would this girl be the good one, the right one? Mama sneaked away to the royal jardin and found a small pea that was fit for a queen. Huh. So Mama sneaked away to this royal jardin. What do you think a jardin is? Look at the picture. Where is Mama? She looks like she's in the garden, right? So jardin is how you say garden in Spanish. And what did she get in the garden? A pea? What do you think she's going to do with this pea? How is this going to help her test the girl? Huh. Well, let's see. Hmm. Well, it looks like Mama has the pea in her hand and she's marching up the stairs. Huh. I wonder where she's going with that. She guarded the pea pod and took to the stair. If this girl is worthy, she'll feel that it's here. Huh. I wonder what she means by that. That if this girl is worthy, she'll feel Feel the pea there. Where is she putting it so that the princess can feel it? Hmm. She placed El Guisante in the bed for the guest. So for the girl, she put the pea in her bed. And then she yelled, Faint they mattresses! A lofty request. A very big request. <gasps> Faint they mattresses! <gasps> Faint they is a number in Spanish. And it is the number 20. <gasps> My friends, what does the queen want with 20 mattresses? Let's see what's going to happen with them. Oh, my friends, so what's going on here? What are they bringing? All these different mattresses? Let's see what kind they're bringing. The queen settled in with her box of bonbones. <gasps> bonbones, huh? So it looks like she's settling down and she's eating something here. That must be the bonbones. What do you think they are? What do you think they look like? They kind of look like chocolates, huh? Or candies and sweets. So she settled in with her box of bonbones while lots of strong workers came in with colchones. So colchones are all these mattresses. Alright, you ready to learn about the mattresses? Alright, uno, 
The first one was suave, soft. Dos. The second one was pequeño, very small. Tres was muy grande, so very big. The third one was super big. And cuatro was un sueño. So the fourth one here was so dreamy, so comfortable. So she has four mattresses already. She still needs a lot more to get to 20 mattresses, right? 16 more, actually. My friends, which of these mattresses would you want to sleep on? Yeah, I would like the dreamy one, or maybe the really big one looks nice and fluffy, huh? Several were pinstripes, so had some stripes. Some made a fleece, a soft material. Others were dotted, or checkered, or grease. So grease is gray in Spanish. So what kinds of mattresses is she bringing in? Do you remember? What are the different kinds? Yeah, they're stripes, polka dots, checkers, gray. What other colors do you see here that she's bringing in? Yellow, some blues, all these different ones. Huh? So she needs how many in total? 20. <gasps> My friends, look at all those mattresses stacked up really high, huh? Do you think it'd be kind of scary to sleep on the top of that bed so high up? Hmm. The queen ate her treats. The bed was stacked high. And right when they finished, la niña, the girl, came by. Here is your cama. Here is your bed. A place you can sleep. Thanks, said the girl. I won't even count sheep. So you sometimes you count sheep if you can't sleep. So La Nina is saying she doesn't even need to count sheep because she thinks she'll fall asleep right away. With all these mattresses, maybe it makes it super soft and comfy, huh? Well, my friends, so let's take a closer look at this picture. What do you see on this bed? Do you notice the El Grisante, the P anywhere? Yeah, do you see it at the very bottom of the bed? Under the last mattress, there's a little El Grisante, the P. Mm. Huh. Do you know what the test is, my friends, with the P? I'm thinking that the queen is wondering that if the girl can feel the P while she's sleeping underneath all these mattresses, then maybe that's the test she has to pass. Do you think you could feel a little tiny pee that was under 20 mattresses? <laughs> I don't know if I could feel it even under one. Meanwhile, El Principe, the prince, practiced I do's. I do's is what you say when you get married. He knew that this maiden was the one he should choose. So how does he feel about this La Nina? He loves her, huh? I like her mama, he said with a lilt, with a happy, cheerful tone. We'll see, said the queen, as she fluffed up his quilt. Hmm, so look at the boy, he's so happy, right? And what is mom thinking about that? She's like, well, let's see if La Nina can pass her test, right? Does the queen think that the girl will pass the test? Doesn't sound like it, huh? Look at the girl way high up there, high on those 20 mattresses. And looks like she's getting ready to go to bed, huh? Huh, and look, how did she get up there all the way to the top of the bed? How did she get up? Yeah, it looks like she had to climb a ladder to get onto her bed, a really tall ladder. Do you still see the P? Yeah, the El Guisante right there at the bottom. Right here at the bottom of the bed. I wonder if she'll feel it. She looks super tired. The girl stretched her brazo, stretched her arms. Can you stretch out your arms? Ah. And yawned with her boca. Ah, yawned with her mouth. Can you yawn? Ah. But the bed felt so lumpy. Huh. Like there was a roca. A roca, like a rock. So my friends, this girl is feeling like the mattresses, even though there's 20 of them, feel super bumpy, huh? I wonder if that's because she can feel the pee, do you think? She thinks the pee feels like a rock? Huh. 
the little guisante was 20 times deep. Could it be the reason the girl got no sleep? What do you think? Is that why? Huh, well, let's see. She trudged down to breakfast, walked slowly to breakfast. Her oh so droopy. Her eyes were so droopy. Why do you think they were so droopy? Do you think she got much sleep last night? Maybe not on that uncomfortable bed. And how is your slumber? How is your sleep? La Reina was snoopy. She wanted to know. Great, said the girl. If you like hard and lumpy. Oh, pobrecita, the prince said. You're grumpy. Also, pobrecita means, oh, you poor thing, said the prince. You look grumpy. The queen's like wondering, what's going on? Did she feel it? The girl brightened up as she noticed the lad, the boy. Really, she murmured. It wasn't that bad. Oh, so when she sees the boy, how does her mood change? How does she feel now when she sees the prince? Does she look tired anymore? No, right? How does she look? She looks really happy and cheerful to see the prince. Like, oh, oh, I'm not too tired. It was fine, right? Huh. So how do you think the girl feels about the lad or the boy? Seems like she really likes him, too. I wonder what the queen's going to say about that. How does the queen look right now? Does she look too happy about this? She doesn't look too happy. Look at that. She's got this grumpy cat on her head. You know what? Her face and the cat face kind of look the same, huh? Kind of have the same expression on their face. I thought La Reina. How'd she detect it? How did she feel it? Is she a real princess? I think I suspect it. Hmm, so she thinks she might be a real princess then. She signaled her son that the girl had passed the test. Drat! She had managed to stave off the rest. So drat, she had managed to stop all the other princesses. But not this one. Huh. So it looks like mom is like, okay, she must be a real princess then because she passed the test. But is she happy about it? Not too happy. But how do you think the prince and the La Nina feel? The prince soon proposed with a golden anillo, a golden ring, like this one, a ring. They married that week in the royal castillo, in the royal castle. The queen kept her promise and threw a big boda, a big wedding. The bride wore a wedding gown, stylish de moda, so very stylish. And my friends, look at her gown. Does it look like the wedding dresses that you're familiar with seeing? Or does it look kind of different than what you often see? It looks a bit different. I know that I sometimes see a lot of white dresses here where I live, but it looks like she's wearing a really colorful one with lots of patterns and flowers and designs. And he's wearing lots of really colorful things also. Hmm. Excepto, excepto, they both said, I do, I do. And still to this day, the queen has no clue. <gasps> no clue about what? The prince had put pitchforks and stones in la cama. So pitchforks are these long tools with really pointy edges and all these rocks in her bed. The same night the mom put the pee in the bed. To help his true love pass the test of Queen Mama. My friends, so do you think the girl actually really felt the pee? Or was she feeling the pitchforks and the sharp, the sharp points in the rocks the prince put there? I don't know. Well, I think she definitely felt both of them. She felt something, right? Because it was hard and lumpy. This boy is so clever, huh? So he added all these extra things to make sure this girl passed the test. Because he loved her and she loved him and they knew they wanted to be together, right? Wow, look at all of these little children, my friends. What a big family they've got going on here. Wow, do you think that's all of their children? The prince and his bride had hijos galore, had lots of children. One for each mattress and then had no more. 
One for each mattress, my friends. How many mattresses do you remember? How many mattresses were there? Ain't they mattresses? 20 mattresses? So how many children did they have if they had one for each mattress? 20 children? What a big family, huh? But look, how do they all look? Super happy. And my friends, look at Lorena, the mom, the queen. How does she feel with all these little grandchildren and a great big family? She looks so happy, huh, to have so many new family members and have all of them together with her. It looks like there's a lot of love in this picture, don't you think? Yeah. What are some things you're noticing about the children? Do you see anyone in particular you like or you think is funny? I see little babies, so those must be the youngest ones there with mom and dad. Oh, or there's this little baby here. These look like twins. The end, my friends. All right, my friends, that was such a fun story. Such a fun version of the princess and the pea. La princesa and the pea. I hope you enjoyed this tale of love. What was your favorite part? Yeah, those are really good parts. I liked the part at the end when they had the big family with the 20 children. And did you like the colorful pictures in this book? Yeah, you saw a lot of the Peruvian art style. Looks like the Peruvian art style just has a lot of bright colors and patterns. So you know what would be fun? Maybe you could read the original story, The Princess in the Pea version, and then you can compare and you can see how that story is different than this story, The Princess in the Pea. That would be really cool. They're both stories of love, but I think they both tell them in different ways. And I liked in this story how the prince tricked his mama, who was trying to trick the girl, and what did, what did the prince add to all the mattresses so his princess would feel them? Stones and pitchforks, so sneaky, huh? All right, my friends, well, I hope you enjoyed this tale of love. Let's move on to our craft of the week inspired by this story. It's a fun one. So, this week's craft is a princess and the pea marble run. So how many of you are familiar with marble runs? It's like um, when they have either pipes or some kind of uh, barriers and you put a marble down and they like roll through and you have to, it's kind of like a maze sometimes. <laughs> well, it sort of looks like this. How fun does this look? And it's so colorful, just like the princess and the pea and all of those different mattresses, right? And guess what? It is super simple to make, as always. And it fits the theme of our book perfectly. Plus, you can use peas as marbles. So instead of marbles, you just get a can of peas and use peas to send down your marble run. I have a bunch down here waiting to be used. So this is how it works. You just kind of you use the pea and you can send it down your marble run. And let's see. Here it goes. It's going down. It's going down. And it made it to the bottom. <laughs> All right. Now, very easy to make, as I mentioned. You just This is just a shoebox lid. And I just took 20 different strips of colored paper. I got one big background sheet of paper to put in the back, then cut out 19 strips of paper, and you just put glue all over, and then just glue them onto the background piece of paper. And I just have a bunch of different colorful pieces of paper. If you don't have a bunch of different colors, plain construction paper works too and you just vary the colors. Or you can just have your child go ahead and color and decorate on different white pieces of paper and then just cut those up into 19 strips and then you have your 19 different colors and a background piece of paper. And these are just pieces of cardboard cut up and you just hot glue them down to make sure they stay. And you can put them in any design or setup that you want so when you send your pee down then they go in any kind of maze pattern. So it's a super fun craft so definitely try it out and it goes perfectly with our La Princesa and the Pea story. So as usual, all the instructions for this craft can be found on the blog My Storybook by clicking on the link below. There you can also find the additional reading resources like main themes and ideas and some vocabulary to incorporate in a reading of your own. And also please be sure to share your crafts if you do them with My Storybook. I would love to see your own Princess in the Pea Marble runs and hear about your reading adventures. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, on the blog, or here on YouTube by clicking on all of those social media links down below. 
And just a reminder, new read alouds come out every Friday, so please check back in every Friday for our new reading adventures. And if you subscribe to my Storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button, then you'll be updated and can keep up with all of our reading adventures every Friday and see them right when they're released. So we'll be continuing our theme of love-themed read-alouds, and next Friday is the first Friday of February, so we have a very special love-themed book planned for next week. So I hope you can join us, but until then, my friends, happy reading!